Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm James Shakeshaft. And I'm Alistair Beckett-King. This week's tale is a little bit different because it was suggested by a listener. We've had a few listener suggestions in, thank you very much. Apart from the listener whose suggestion somewhat slandered Princess Anne, we're not going to do that one. But this one came from Simon Martin, thanks Simon. Thank you, Simon. And it's a real doozy. It's called Mother Ludlam, and she had a cauldron and a whole bunch of stories about that cauldron. While the music fades in, will you tell me what Princess Anne did? Actually, it wasn't that bad. Given recent events, boy, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> this one... By the way... Oh, by the way, I've moved now. I've moved house. Congratulations. And I thought of the podcast because in about the week before moving house, we had to clear out the basement which I'd mentioned in the Blue Cap episode. I was very impressed that you had a basement. Series series one, episode two or three? Sounds about right to me. Uh, Blue Cap. And the reason I remembered it is because during that, I said about how the basement was an absolute mess and it was weighing on my mind. And I didn't realise my wife was very supportive and would listen to the podcast. (laughs) And I was like... What's wrong with the basement? <laughs> oh, no. And then in moving, you've got to take all your things. So we had to go through everything in the basement. But we really sorted it out and chucked a load of stuff away, all that. It was all neat. It was all really, really neat. And I thought, actually, I don't. we don't need to move anymore. We've got loads of them. <laughs> um, but now all the things are in a loft. We haven't got a basement in the new one. But oh. We have a loft. But there's weird stuff in this new town. So we're in it. We moved to the countryside. Um, and this town, it's got. I thought it was like, oh, that must just be a pub sign. It's got a, one of them things sticking out over the street, like a pub sign. A does. shingle. And in it is a sphere. Mm. And then the writing above it says, the witch's orb, or the witch's ball, or something like that. Mm. And I thought, oh, that must be a pub. And then I realised there's no pub there. It's so, just a thing. It's just there for no reason. I don't know what it's... I've got, I keep forgetting to look up on Wikipedia what it might be. The Witch's Orb. Yeah, it's like, is that... I hope that used to be a pub and they just kept the sign up because it looked cool rather than an actual witch-related artefact because I imagine it was not taken from a witch, it was probably used to hurt a witch. Yes, well, In yeah, some yeah. way, because that's all people did. Speaking of witches, today's story is about a witch. Yeah. <sighs> Now, this one is from a listener suggestion. Oh. Yeah. What a treat. From a um, friend of the show and me, mine, a friend of mine, um, Simon Martin. Hello, Simon Martin. Hi, Simon. It's a great story. What, what have you got for us? Mother Ludlam's Cave. Mother Ludlam's Cave is in Farnham in Surrey. It's in the Way Valley near Waverley Abbey, which is bloody lovely to say. Mm. Highly recommend it. Waverley Abbey is just ruins now, but the Way Valley is still a thing with a cave in it, which is still called Mother Ludlam's Cave or Mother Ludlam's Hole. Both equally good names. So I looked up the legends. A lot of them to do with monks. Called Simon as well, which made me think, come on, Simon. Yeah, come on, Don't Simon. Don't just get your name. Don't just like a thing because it's got the same name as you. Uh, yeah, all the legends to do with either this monk or a stream, apart from the ones that are to do with his most famous resident, Mother Ludlam. Now, all the stories about Mother Ludlam revolve around borrowing her cauldron. Mm. But it gets better because that cauldron, to this day is in the nearby Frensham Church. Oh. Yeah, it's still... So you can go and see it? The opposite of most of my stories, the things involved in it don't just turn into dust and disappear <laughs> at the end of the story. This is Yeah, it's still there. I've seen a picture. So you've got a re- real extant object verifying that this happened? Yeah. Wow. This cauldron. And there's a bunch of different legends about this cauldron. There's so many. Well, there's three. I'm going to let you pick... I'm going to tell them all, but you can pick the order. Oh, all right. So, do you want... There's one to do with the devil. There's one to do with a person... And there's one to do with fairies. I'm going to go with person first. Okay. I'm, going to, I'm saving the fairies and devil uh, for des- like dessert. Right. So, so I'm going to have a starter, starter of person. Okay. Just like a, the bit of bread while we wait. While yeah. We sort of sit down. Uh, are you charging for this? No, if I eat this, no, no. if I eat this, do I have to pay for it? If I don't eat it, do I, I still have to pay for it? I mean, it's 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 there. You've you've paid for it in 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 the markup, so you you might as well eat all the bread. Eat all the person you can get. Can I ask for more person? <laughs> I think you can, actually. I'm greedy. It's like tap water, just for the table. Mm. Okay, so if you're a person, 
you go down to Mother Ludlam's cave at midnight, turn around three times and say, pray, good Mother Ludlam, lend me such and such, and I will return it in two days. You obviously replace such and such with the thing you actually want to borrow. Right. And then you go home, and the next morning it will be outside the cave, and you can borrow it. Mm. She was a lender. She lent stuff. So anything? Anything. But but, but it only lasts two past. days? Yeah. Right. You can borrow anything. Usually it was kitchen utensils. Now, someone one day borrowed a cauldron and was late giving it back. Mother Ludlam was so furious with the borrower that they hid in the church and hid the cauldron in the church. Right. Because Mother Ludlam wouldn't be able to go in there because she was a witch. Yeah, yeah. Um, Or the story was that she was so furious she refused to take it back and was never seen again. And the guy just donated it to the church wow what what a, what a terrifying threat Br- mm. bring it back to me or i'll be so angry that i'm never seen again and you get to keep it how did they know she was that angry she just was never seen again mm. and and then he donated it to the church apparently where it stands to this day all right fair, fair enough but what a what a strong finishing move just never being seen again I, that's ultimate mm. sulk very passive aggressive now fine keep it i'm going i'm going to not exist anymore then you'll be sorry that's the end of your starter <laughs> thank you so you got mains what uh, do you want for your for, mains? For my mains, I'm going to have the fairy, please. Oh, the fairies. Yep. Okay. I'm keeping the devil for afters. Puds. Pud puds. Uh, so, fairies. There is a hill called Burrow Hill. Is the pause part of the name? I'm. The thing is, it's called Burrow Hill. That and doesn't make sense. How can a hill be a burrow? Well, because it's got a burrow on That's it. Like, oh, there's a, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Burrow, you get. I, called, I get it now. The reason I was labouring it is because Burrow Hill and... You go to the fairies and you ask to borrow something, and the thing was like, "Oh, it's obvious." It was even it was Westwood and Simpson was like, "It's clearly a pun on Burrow Hill," and then I was like, "Oh, do they mean Burrow and Borrow is like a they're punning on they that?" Sound similar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to make that work, but it's impossible. Okay. So up on top of Burrow Hill, there is a big old boulder from which, if you listen carefully, you can hear music, classic rock. <laughs> I tell you what, I was listening to the song Bat Out of Hell today. Mm. It's eight minutes long, and it's basically two songs about bats that are just back to back. Like, it finishes with the whatever it is, I can crawl on back to you. And then there's like four more minutes of music and different verses in a different tune. That's like, that's not... That's a medley. Anyway, probably, probably take that bit out. Yeah, and then what, what you do is you whisper to the stone, because the fairies are in the stone playing the oh, music. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, you whisper what you want and how long you want to borrow it for. But if you don't return it on the date that you stated, you are cursed to have that thing follow you around for the rest of your days. <laughs> what, the thing? Yeah. like, And in this case, it was a cauldron. Right. So he had that following around. What, being followed by a cauldron? As threats go, these are weak. But it's like a poor credit score, isn't it? Because it'd be like, oh, don't lend him. St- look, he didn't. He obviously didn't give her that cauldron back because mm. clunk, clunk. It reminds me of a thing. I'm going to ask you this out of politeness. Have you read any of the Discworld books? What do you mean? How dare you say that so sarcastically? Yes, I've read all of the Discworld right. books. Right, it's reminded me of the luggage. The like luggage, got, yeah. That'd be actually quite useful if you had a cauldron following you around the whole time. You could use it to keep your drinks yeah, in. Absolutely, especially if your outfit doesn't have pockets. Pop it in the cauldron. Yeah, pop it in the cauldron, mate. You wouldn't other, be other people to... might say, oh, can I just want to pop this down. Just stick it in the cauldron. Yeah, I, I'll come with you. Oh, don't forget that cauldron. <laughs> I wish. Um, yeah, you're obviously, you wouldn't be able to go to funerals or the theatre, but anywhere else. But the thing. Oh, the... You could put a wreath on it. A clunk. It'd clunk, yeah. clunk its way into the funeral. It could be next to you as you stand graveside. Yeah, put tissues in if for other, for other yeah. mourners. Popcorn in it at the cinema. Yeah, not at the funeral. <laughs> um, and because and that's what the cauldron would have been used for for weddings and stuff like that. It would have been used for like um, village t- or town wide events. They mm. use it as a big thing to have a big communal meal. So you'd always be invited to weddings and this stuff is like that. Brilliant having a cauldron that follows you around all the time. How I, is that a punishment? I think maybe the person lied that they were following it around because they just wanted to get invited to all the weddings. Yeah. Because otherwise, it'd be like, can I borrow your cauldron? Yeah. But, oh, no, I mean, it, I, it follows me around, so I have to be always within three feet of it, so I'm coming to your wedding now. Yeah, and the listener Not was the like... Not the ceremony, just the evening, thank you. But how did that happen? Can you come up with an outlandish story that explains it? Well, yes, I can. I went up to the top of a hill and whispered at a rock. Yeah. Okay, come to my wedding. <laughs> 
and then and the story was and the person f- was chased by this cauldron and finally d- collapsed and died in the church and that's why the cauldron's still in the church to right, this well, very day I hadn't anticipated the, the death uh, the fact that there's three completely different explanations for this isn't adding to the veracity of the story but let's hear the one about devils okay so the devil turned up to Mother Ludlam to ask her to borrow the cauldron <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so yeah, so he needs a cauldron. And she was about to lend it to him when she noticed his hoof prints in the sand. Because mm. presumably he disguised himself as a non devilish right, looking yes. person. Um, but she saw that his feet were leaving hoof prints in the sand. I was like, no, I'm not going to lend you this cauldron for you are the devil. So the devil stole the cauldron. And ran away. <laughs> what a rascal. So she chased after him on a broomstick, because she's a witch. Sorry, because when you said the devil came, because the devil often comes in stories and asks for seemingly small things. Mm. And the point is that the devil's trying to rope you in a little bit, you know? Mm. It's like, do me this favour. Can I can I borrow this from you? But but when she refuses to lend him the cauldron, he still steals the cauldron. Stealing the cauldron. It's just that he did actually want the cauldron. I want this cauldron. <laughs> it was the cauldron. Not the is why he was there. Yeah, and then he ran off, and then he... Just being chased by Mother Ludlam, and he like did these three massive leaps and kicked up these three ha- hills called the Devil's Jumps. Mm. One of which is Borough Hill. Uh, I All don't right. know the name of the other one. And then he dropped the cauldron on the third hill called Kettleberry Hill. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, I see what's happened there. Yeah, and that's the and that's how those things came to be. And so Mother Ludlam retrieved the cauldron and kept it in the church to keep it safe from the devil. Yep, 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 perfectly reasonable. Devil's Jump Sidebar. Would you like a Devil's Jump Sidebar? Yeah, There's another on story me. related to the Devil's Jumps. He used to just love jumping between the hills. And the right. devil would have a great time jumping between the hills, the Devil's Jumps, until Thor told him to stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And... Yeah, and the devil, yeah, yes. I accept it. Thor from Marvel. Yeah. The devil said, took the mickey out of Thor, said, oh, you're just jealous because you're too old to do it. And so Thor threw a massive rock at him and that landed on top of Borough Hill. And that's the big stone the fairies live in, top of Borough Borrow Hill. Nice Borrow. work. It works if you're American. It doesn't, that's even more dispiriting. Do you go mm. to Edinburgh? <laughs> Can I borrow a cauldron, dude? <laughs> I'm going to totally... <laughs> as long as you don't turn it into a bong. <sighs> Quite a tale. Story ends. Score time. Score time. <laughs> you said it like a butler. Score time? Uh, uh, score time. Yes. So, the scores. Okay. I'm going to go first with puns. You're going to open with puns? Yeah, I just want to okay. get it out of the way. Well, uh, how many puns were there? So, there's, there's Borough Borough. Borough Borough. Yeah. Borough Borough. Um, Kettleberry Hill. Kettle. Because he dropped a cauldron. Which yeah. is like a kettle. That's word wordplay. Yeah. I'll accept that. And it might have got a bit buried. Yeah. Uh yeah. on Kettleberry Hill. Mm-hmm. I mean that's just a name actually. Oh, stop talking to yourself out of points. <laughs> <laughs> I did a pun about what music would be coming out of the boulder. Yes. Because I said it might be rock music. Rock music. Or Sly and the Family Stone. Yep. Should have gone with the Rolling Stones. Yep. Clearer. I, 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 Clearer in fact, I've never heard of the other people that you said. Sly or the Family Stone. Sty, Sly or the Family Stone. Sly and the Family Stone. Not Sly or the Family Sty Stone. Sly and the Family Stone. You can't have or in the name of a band, can you? No. You can't have Kenny Rogers or the first edition. <laughs> Sly, Don't ha- make me choose. <laughs> <laughs> and also, how cool that that was the first band I could think of that was Blanky Blank and the Blank Blanks. Yeah. Yeah. Cliff Richard or the Shadows? This is just the Shadows. Oh, that is a... Ooh. And that was it for puns. That was all, so, that was all so the puns. So you have three three puns, but you did you did repeat one of them quite a lot. They were so laboured, though, that makes them seem like more. Yeah, it, it did give the impression of being more. I'm going to give it a three out of five because I don't like puns. Some puns are like, those puns I don't like. I agree. Should have called it bad puns. Mm, you'd be staring down the barrel of a four. <laughs> Damn it. But it was not to be. Then Supernatural. Supernatural. It's a highly supernatural story, James. Yes. Witches. It's got a witch. Witch, yeah. It's got, it's got the devil. Yes. Several fairies. <laughs> Some fairies. It's got TV's Thor. Yeah. Um, it's got a, a kettle, which is like a sort of... 
You know the way Anthony Hopkins disappears into a role? This kettle just does everything. It shows up in all the different things. It's in every version of the story. Yeah. The kettle. It's the, it's like the... Um, so I, I'm not seen four rooms enough, but I imagine that's probably got a device that links all the things in I it, doesn't seen, it? I don't know four rooms. It's not very good. All right. Um, it's like the little duck in the Usborne books that was in every illustration. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. It's like Rashomon. It's like the Rashomon gate in Rashomon. Rashomon gate in Rashomon? Yeah. Is Rashomon a gate? Yeah. It's, it's a place. It's not a person. No, Rashomon is the place where the st- the story happens. I think I thought because it's got Mon in it, it was like, that was like a Like man. it's a Jamaican. Like Rashomon. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a pig version of Rasta Mouse. Yeah. Yes. Rashomon. Yes. Rashomon. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to have to up the pun. Yeah. One to four based purely on Rashomon. Being but, a pig. But don't push it. Some sort of Jamaican pig suit detective. No, <laughs> just superhero. I don't know why he's a detective. I'm, I know why I'm he's a detective. I'm only on the board if he's a detective. Because by talking about something Japanese, it's somehow li- linked in my brain to, linked to the trauma film, Sergeant Kabuki Man. Wow. Which was about a policeman who had some sort of curse that meant he would turn into a kabuki actor during it at points in this film. Is that a real film? That's a film. The trauma films were legendary amongst my group of friends. There was Sergeant Kabuki Man, which I think was the only one that Georgie's video library had that we would rent out and watch. But it had the trailers at the beginning with such brilliantly named films as Blondes Have More Guns (laughs) and Surf Nazis Must Die. Well, we can all agree with that. Definitely. All Nazis, whether they be on land or or sea. Or surf. <laughs> we will fight them on. Um, what category is this? Uh, Winston Churchill Impressions. Five out of five. Yes. No, it was Supernatural and it is five out of five. And, yeah. and the ghost of Churchill that you, you invoked in order to, to kill our, our serving enemy. Yeah. Five out of five. What's the next category? Mm. Names. Names. I feel I should have kept my powder dry mm. on the names front. Well... Well, I mean, a lot of the names are also puns, so, okay, but you Mother know, we've got... Mother Ludlum. Mother Ludlum, Mother Ludlum's Hole, Mother Ludlum's Cave. Waverley Abbey in it's the Way Valley. Waverley Valley in Le Leme. Simon Martin. <laughs> Your friend, Simon Martin. Yeah, my uh, friend and mine. <laughs> <laughs> friend of the show, Simon Martin. Yeah. Um... I think it is a it's a very charming three out of five for names. Okay, Simon I enjoy is very I enjoy Kettleberry Hill. Okay, it's a nice yeah. name. Yeah, I wish I I really did try and find the name of the other one. Yeah, what's the third hill called, James? Well, I saw somewhere that it was called like Stone Top, but then I think that's just confused with Borough Hill, mm. which has got the stone on the top of it. Because you can't, I can't imagine that two of them had stones on top of them. And only one called st- got called Stone Top. Yeah, that'd be one of the stone. It'd be like Stone Top Hill too. So would I get a three? It's a three. I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. That's as many as there are jumps. For yep. the Devil. Uh, okay. My final category: Extended Universe. Explain this category to me a bit, because I'm not an expert in the the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, it's not just Marvel's Extended Universe, but we do have someone from Marvel's Extended yeah. Universe. We've got Thor. Thor. We've uh, yep. just got. I'm saying we've got cameos from people from different tie in all these different. Like Thor lives in the same world as Mother Ludlum. <laughs> <laughs> what a crossover! And the luggage from the yeah, the, um, and, and an object which is like the luggage from Discworld. Yeah. Yep. And the, the devil. He's in lots of films. Yep. Speria, because I I said that the. Cauldron follows you around like a poor credit score. So in the uh, Xperia, oh, it's, get, it's getting tenuous Xperia here, James. Extended universe <laughs> from the adverts where the dog talks to people and says you sh- they should check out your credit score. <clears throat> it's a weak case so far. It, yeah, it got weaker, really, didn't it? It really did. Yeah, um, fairies from from fairies from the life of uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's about it. Well, James, I hope you'll agree with me that that is the. The, the worst case you've ever made for any points. But they were all in their own extended universes as well. The Cauldron's extended universe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> or the adventures that it went on. Right. You've got to just keep saying the phrase extended universe to explain your reasoning. <laughs> Thor, also, Thor is a, just a god. No, I think it's a... Just a god. <laughs> I think it's a one out of five for extended universe. No, I've never been less impressed. 
It's a, it's a lovely story. Uh, let me be clear about this, James. It's not the story's fault. For God's sake, it's not Simon's fault. <laughs> Simon, if you're listening, I'm, I'm sorry about this. It's on you, James. It's all you. It's one out of five. Damn it. This category should have been the little cauldron that could. Yep. That would have been a five out of five, but it's it's too late now. Oh, if the cauldron had been called Ron, <laughs> I could have made up some points earlier on in the pun round. Damn it. Another case for Detective Rashomon. Sort of sound of bacon slapping together. <laughs> Oink, oink. Why would, why would a pig use bacon for paper? They wouldn't do it. Oh, no. That'd be horrible. That'd be like binding your cases in human skin. You've been listening to Lawmen. The Lawmen are James Shakeshaft. And Alistair Beckett King. Next week, I am bringing you Captain Thickness. Ooh. His own spin-off episode. If you want to bone up on thickness. Bone up on the thickness. Then which episode did he feature in before? He featured in the London Monster episode, which is a very good one. And this is a sort of, think of it as Joey to Friends. Oh. Or Frasier to Cheers. Better. And Morgan Mindy to Happy Days. Happy Days. Yes. Yes. You know, Jump the Shark comes from Happy Days. Yeah. Right, Happy Days ran for about 10 to 15 series. Yeah. They jumped the shark in series five. He jumps the shark before they're visited by an alien. (laughs) So it's not that bad jumping the shark, I don't think. And in the last series, Fonzie has a haunted car. (laughs) Which sounds a bit more up my alley. Mm. We could use that phrase. He haunted the car on that one. There's a whole sitcom about a haunted car. In America. Is that? Yeah. What's it called? It's called My Mother the Car. My Mother the Car. I know. They didn't spend any time on the names. So his mum dies and then she haunts his car. And he's always trying to get off with girls. Yeah. But the car... To make out point. (laughs) Exactly. And the car is always interfering. So he... It's a disgusting premise. Tries... Inside his... Yeah, I know. How do you pitch that? Oh. Yeah, that's worse than the Back to the Future. That is a lot worse. Yes, at least the DeLorean wasn't his mum. I made a time machine <laughs> out of your mother. It's weird. Well, if you can make a time machine, why not do it with some Oedipal complex? So, uh, yeah, Captain Thickness or something. Yeah, yeah watch, watch, listen to the show.